Okay, I'm back. Just give it a minute for all of you to hop on. And while I'm waiting, I will log into my Facebook page here so I can see your comments when I flip the camera around. Thanks for bearing with me. I figured that there would be the possibility of an issue. Okay, I see some people hopping on now. Oh my goodness. Technology, right? All right, let me log in here. Happy Monday. Can everyone hear me okay? I have my, um, I had my microphone on the phone muted before. Hi, Denise. And hopefully you all can hear me um, that it isn't still on mute. I think I'm good to go, but you never know. Hello again, Vicki and Sharon and Carol and Carol. I'm back. Okay, good. Thank you, Linda, for letting me know. All right, logging in so I can see your comments. All right, logging ooh, in. So I there we go. There we go. Okay, awesome. So sorry about the technical difficulties. One of these days I will get this fixed. I keep finding articles to fix it and it's just not working. So I might have to call the company. A lot of these online um, companies just... They don't have anyone you can call. You can only email them for support. Either that or I might have to find a different software that I know I can rely on. So, happy Monday. It's time for Make It Monday and we're gonna do something fun with our embossing folders tonight. I think you're really gonna like what I have in store. I'm seeing some new names here in the comments, so welcome. Um, my name, for those of you who are new, my name is Rose Grunewald. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. I'm super passionate about sharing creativity, and one of my favorite things to do is make cards and paper craft. So um, I am stamping with you tonight from my stamping studio here in New Holstein, Wisconsin. I see some local people on. Hi, Lola from Green Bay. And I know Robin is local too. Hi, Robin. Good to see you again. <clears throat> um, I give away prizes. And there are um, three ways that you can be entered into my prize drawing. You can like my video and send me lots of love when you see something that I'm doing that you love. Um, hit those hearts and those likes. Uh, and that's one way that you can be entered into the prize drawing. You can comment on my video. Um, so I enter the comments in for a drawing. I see people hitting that love button right now. I so appreciate that. It makes my heart happy to know that you are enjoying my project. Um, so you can comment on the video. I don't want to talk to myself. I love to interact with all of you. So as you comment and chat with me, that is wonderful as well. And so I always give a prize away every week for likes and comments. And then I give one away for sharing my videos. So I so appreciate when you share my video with your friends. Now, when you share the video, you are going to want to use the hashtag country cards by Rose Live. And that is the easiest way for me to see all the people who shared the video. I just click on that hashtag. I see a page of everyone who shared my video and whoever used that hashtag um, gets entered into my drawing for sharing the video. So I give the best prizes away for sharing. All right, if you are catching the replay on YouTube, I have tons and tons of tutorials, video tutorials there. So take a minute and hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel and that way you can have all my videos in one handy place. Um, super awesome, lots and lots of inspiration there. If you are watching this replay on Facebook, I don't do the drawing until right before my next video, so you have all week to get in on that drawing. You can share and comment and be entered to win. So, I think we should go right to prizes. What do you think, huh? I am going to flip this around. You're going to see a little bit of what I have prepared for tonight. 
on my desktop, I think, as I flip it. But we're going to flip and get to prizes. Turn on my other light here. I haven't flipped around this um, camera in a while, so hopefully we don't have... Okay, I'm seeing a little shadow here. That should do it. It's been a bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now there's a little bit of a delay here <laughs> as I go to the comments. <laughs> All right, my prizes. I have two prizes. These are reprizes because the people who won these didn't claim them. Uh, in the comments, or the description, I should say, for this video, I have a link. If you win the prize, click the prize claim form. So for likes and comments, I'm giving away this pretty partial die cut card. You have two weeks to claim your prize. Um, you might remember I made this on a Make It Monday Live about a month ago, and it features the hand pen bundle. So gorgeous. This, I have to tell you, is probably one of my favorite cards that I have ever made. And I think it turned out just absolutely stunning. Um, and the winner for liking and commenting from last week is Carla Hathaway. Carla, I don't have your address, so definitely make sure to complete that prize claim form by next week, and I will get that out in the mail to you. And then I've got a reprise. This uh, pack of cards, looks like there's four of them in here. I think it's uh, Get Well and Thank You cards, all of the generics that you want to have on hand when you need to send a card to somebody. Um, and so this is a whole package. And the winner of this is for sharing is Sue Bonnet. So congratulations, Sue. Thank you so much for sharing my video. Make sure you guys share and use that hashtag to get in on the prizes. Okay. I'm setting some of this stuff aside. I've got quite the... Uh, stack of stuff going on in my studio because I am getting ready to finish up ordering my uh, hand penned uh, class to go and so I've got that all around and I've been designing for my next my July class to go and super excited for that one too. All right, we're going to cut our cardstock first of all. So we are going to need a card base. This is crumb cake. And we're just doing a standard card base here. So when I'm just doing a standard hamburger fold card base, that's what we used to call it in elementary school, I just cut my card stock in half. Now for those of you um, who just bought the paper trimmer or a new beginner stamper, um, this nice big line along here is the halfway mark for um, a half a sheet of cardstock on our paper trimmer. So it's super easy to just line it up right there and cut. Now we also are going to need a couple layers of uh, basic white. So we will need one for the inside that will be five and a quarter by four. So I'm just cutting that piece. And then we'll need two for the outside. And one is going to be five inches by three and three quarters. And I always save these scraps because you never know. And then our next one is going to be five and one eighth by three and seven eighths. So do three and seven eighths, and five and one eighth. So it's one eighth of an inch bigger than this other piece we just cut. Okay, and then set all our scraps aside. <clears throat> all right, and let's get this extra card base out. All right, for tonight's project, we are using the Hand Penned Petals Bundle. 
Um, this, these dies are what coordinates with the stamp set. So penned flowers dies here is what the dies are called. If you have the stamp set and need to buy the one coordinating. Uh, hand pen petals. I have a class to go this month. And let me see if I can get you some cards from it. Featuring this class and the um, Memories and More Pack. So here is a little sneak peek of some of the cards you are going to get to make in my hand penned class to go. This is one of my favorite bundles in the new catalog. The stamp set has 15 images and some, it's a two step stamp so you can like stamp the drawn image of the flower and then you'll be able to color it in here with um, the color, like these solid images. Just absolutely gorgeous, it works really, really great. I'm just going to set this aside. Now we are pairing that tonight with one of our um, embossing folders. And the one I'm choosing to use tonight is our brick and mortar embossing folder. And we're going to need, we're going to need a little scratch paper here. So let me just get that out. Now this embossing folder I've already played around to make sure I have the right. I want to get everything set up for this technique before I get to going on it. So I'm going to get my um, cutting plate ready. And for this particular embossing folder, I need my number four plate with it. So we're going to use our number one and our number four plate. All right. Now this technique, again, you want everything kind of ready to go. So I'm gonna use the smaller, let me make sure I grab the smaller. Yep, the smaller of the pieces that we cut. And I forgot that we are going to need one more scrap of basic white for die cutting. So let me just grab that. All right, I have everything ready. Now we are going to do a little bit of sponging with our new Stampin's, um, I forget what these, I think these are called blending brushes. Um, and we've got some really fun, pretty colors going on here. So I've got Polish Pink, Granny Apple Green, Bermuda Bay, and Gorgeous Grape. And what we're going to be doing is a little bit of blending right onto our embossing folder. Okay, now. Um, all right, I can see. Hmm. I cannot see comments on my screen, but I think that you guys are leaving comments for me. So let me try and refresh this so that I can Oops. not see comments. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're gonna try it again. There we go. Now I am seeing everybody's comments. Little technical difficulties. All right, so I'm getting all my ink set up and ready to go and my blending brush is ready to go here. So let's move these over. All right, we are gonna open up our embossing folder and we are going to sponge or use our blending brush to apply ink right to our embossing folder. Now on any embossing folder, there are two sides. There is a side that pushes the images back, uh, so the emboss side, and then there's the deboss side. And then there's, so the other side that pushes the images up. Now for the brick and mortar one, it doesn't matter that much, which is why I'm actually kind of using this um, 
embossing folder today but for like the dandelion one or some of the flower ones you might want to play around with trying both sides of your embossing folder all right so first I'm gonna start with my polished pink and I need to flip this so I'm just gonna pick up some ink here now you for those of you who are watching me and thinking oh my gosh you're ruining your embossing folder I promise you I'm not this will come clean with baby wipes or I will be able to just run it under my sink no worries all right so sponging on some of that and next I'm gonna grab my granny apple green do a little sponging blending I guess more than sponging this is really blending okay then I'm gonna come in with my Bermuda Bay and do a little blending with that I love these blending brushes these are amazing and you know what's really cool you can just run these right under your tap and all of this is gonna come off. So they are totally reusable. I've been playing around though with this technique. So since these are, this was my favorite color combo. So that's why I wanted to um, use these tonight. And I did not clean these off. I thought I'm just gonna use them again. All right, so I'm gonna close these ink pads because I do not want to ruin our masterpiece once it's ready to go. <clears throat> okay. I'm still having issues seeing all the comments. I don't know why. There we go. I do not know why it's doing that. So, all right, we're gonna try to. I'm gonna try to quick log back in here. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So we've got all of our colors blended onto our embossing folder. And now here's where having everything handy and ready to go and set up comes is really, really nice. I'm going to grab this small, the smaller sheet that I um, cut for the card front and set this here. Okay, I want the bricks to go this way, so I'm going to pay attention. Oh, shoot, I should have. That's okay. We're going to try this this way. Um... So we're going to set this here and I want to make sure I got all of my, you know, I'm going to turn this this way and we're going to do, we're going to try a different shape than I originally had thought. So we're going to center this and close it. And now we are going to get this ready to run through our big boss. Okay, I bet you cannot wait to see what this looks like. And I'm trying really hard not to smudge this. <laughs> Alright, let's bring in our big boss here. Now if you have the baby boss, you can use these with the, do this technique on your smaller embossing folders too. stuff out of the way. Okay, what do you think? Are we ready for the big reveal? Okay. 
Here we go. Oh, look at this pretty card. Isn't it gorgeous? Now, in case you didn't believe me that this is not going to ruin your embossing folder, by the way, you could do this over again. Just re-ink it a little bit. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove to you that this will clean up just fine. All I have here is a baby wipe. And all this ink is coming off just fine. See? No problem. I'm going to prove it to you when I take out my paper from underneath. So we are not ruining our embossing folders by doing this. I'm going to take this downstairs when we're done and clean it under my sink. But it really is that easy. Okay, now, if you want to go for a nice, light, subtle look, no problem. I kind of like, I want this um, Granny Apple Green a little bit more highlighted here. So I'm just going to come in there with a really light blend. And I can bring out even more of those colors wherever I want it or you can just leave it exactly how it was. It's totally up to you. Okay, now, we're gonna do a little more work with our big boss here. And I'm gonna cut this detailed flower die. I'm going to die cut that right now. So I'm getting my cutting plates here. Get them all set up. Okay, I'm just gonna run this through my big boss here. I want to really make sure I have a good cut. So I like to go through twice sometimes, just to make sure. Plus, I'm using an old cutting plate um, or cutting platform. And so sometimes I notice that the newer ones work really great, but sometimes I have to go through twice with my older one. Okay. Just gonna set this aside here my scrap out of the way and then all these little tiny pieces should just pop right out and so we have our detailed flower die My goodness, your comments stopped again. I don't know why it's doing that. So. Try again here. All right, so we have got our die cut piece. we're going to start putting our card together. Now, this piece that was an eighth of an inch bigger, we're actually going to use it as a little bit of matting to make that white that's um, sticking up here really pop. Do you see how that's really going to pop when I mat that on there? And I want this to really stay. So since this is an embossed piece, I'm going to use my Seal Plus. I always, always, always make sure to use a really high quality adhesive when making my cards because I spend time on these handmade beauties and I don't want them to come apart in the mail. Well, 
for embossed images, I will use either liquid glue to make sure I get in all the nooks and crannies, or our amazing Stamp and Seal Plus, which is great um, for 3D projects as well. Okay, and I am going to just line this up in the center. Now, I'm not going to have a lot of give when I do this, so I line up my three sides. There we go. Pretty good. So before I stick the whole thing down, I could see these three sides, and as long as the width on these three sides was even, I knew that my piece was going to be in the center. So what do you think? Are you liking it so far? Do you see how that white really pops in there when we get that white matting? So let's now, here we go. Now our pretty detailed flower image is gonna go right over the top of this. And I think I wanna put it kind of over here in between our gorgeous grape and our Bermuda Bay. I think that will look really, really pretty. And so I can, I'm gonna pop this up on dimensionals and I see a few spots here of solid that I can use some mini dimensionals. So I'm just gonna grab a couple minis here. I think one will go really well here. And one will go here. I love these mini dimensionals for when I am popping up something that's really kind of detailed and I only have a few places to put it. Just like so. There. Okay, now I just take off the backing. I've only put three of them on here, so hopefully this will be good. And set this on our card front. Okay, now, before I got came live, I did a little prep. We are going to use the sentiment, whoops, my die fell off here. We're gonna use the sentiment from our hand pen bundle that says anything is possible. You also could use thanks, and I think that would look really pretty. Really, any of these works great. So if you don't like this sentiment, just swap it out for whatever you would like. And I have already heat embossed this in white embossing powder on a piece of basic black. And now I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to do some fussy cutting around the sentiment. Now, I have found the key to fussy cutting is a couple things. The first thing is that you want to use some really sharp, high quality scissors. And so I use my Stampin' Up, my Stampin' Snips, I think they're called, or Paper Snips. And the other thing I have found when meandering around these um, like rounded edges, I have found that it helps to always be constantly cutting. So as I am, um, and I like to move the paper rather than move my scissors. So as I am moving this paper around, my scissors is constantly kind of closing so that it's always cutting. It's never staying stagnant. There we go. And now we've got this pretty sentiment that really, really pops. All right, and I'm gonna put this over the top of our flower and I don't have any dimensionals here, and I want this the same level as the flowers. So I'm just going to grab a couple uh, minis here. Put this one here, and I am out of minis, so I'm just going to snip one from the edge like this. 
So for those of you intimidated by fussy cutting, um, you might find that those tips really, really help you. Okay, and I am just going to write over the top here. My anything is possible. Now, one thing I thought would be awesome on this card is a little pop of gold. So I'm going to cut off a piece of this and turn it into a little bow. Now this is coming from the Simply Elegant Trim Pack. You get gold and silver in there. And I save the little scraps that um, I have cut off of my previous bows because, well, I'll show you with this one what you can do with it. Because I'm gonna have some um, scraps off of the bow that I'm making here. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this into a little bow, just like this. And um, this ribbon is nice and like it's metallic, so it's nice and stiff and it kind of stays where you want it to go, which I really, really like. Okay, and then I'll just snip off these ends. And you can snip them tighter if you want to. Now these little pieces I'm not going to throw away because as you can see I could very easily just kind of loop them around like this and then they would make a fun layer behind a sentiment. Like I could just put this little loopy here behind the sentiment and it would look really gorgeous. So I am saving all of these little pieces. Alright let's get a glue dot. And where do you think we should put this? Right here. I think above our sentiment. Uh oh. I'm having an issue with my ribbon that I used to keep my glue dot tab. Okay. Of course it ripped right where I want to grab the glue dot. Okay. So, just put that glue dot under the knot. And I'm going to put it right here over the top of our sentiment. All right, now here we go. Let's get our card base ready. And I thought, I wanna try something. I'm actually trying something totally new that I have never done before. Right now, it just came to me. I'm gonna grab this flower image. And I want to see if I can carry this coloring from the front to our inside. So I'm taking my sponges here. That one doesn't seem to be showing up. I have no idea if this is going to work. These are kind of dry. So let's see if I re-sponge it, would it work? Oh, yep, it looks like it will. Okay. And then let me grab my gorgeous grape. We'll see how this works. I've never tried this. So you're getting a little bit of a on the fly technique, huh? Because I want to bring that pretty color to the inside, that pretty variegated color. 
All right, let's see. Hey, it worked. So now our inside layer matches our outside layer. Super, super cool. can put our card together. Okay, get our seal. I love this stuff. It's so smooth. It's amazing. Ooh, I ran out just in time. I have to get a refill. Okay, we've got a crumb cake base. So we're putting this right on the inside. So, isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh, so, so, so pretty. I love it. Okay, now we are going to grab our dimensionals and we're going to pop up our card front layer. Up. There! We have a finished card. Get some of this stuff out of the way. What do you think? Oh my gosh, do you love it? How do you love this technique? So cool! I'm actually going to flip this back around and show you, I'm going to um, show you another card I made using this technique. And that way if you have any questions I can see. I'm sorry for those of you if you asked questions, I could not see the comments on my end. But check out this pretty one that I made with, I know that the saying is backwards, sorry that I made with the butterfly uh, bouquet, I think they're called, dies. So here we have them. Aren't these gorgeous? Okay, you totally, totally have to try this. And here's the pretty inside. Super awesome. So a really fun, soft way. Of course, you can use whatever colors you want. All right. That's all I have for you tonight, stamping friends. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you want more inspiration from me, just head on over to my blog, www.rosegrunewall.com. I've got all sorts of stuff there. And I have... Um, a blog hop going live tonight at 9 o'clock central showing you a 3D card box that holds, I think it's four cards and envelopes. So you're going to love that. Um, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. When you buy from my online store, that's what helps me to keep bringing inspiring things to you. Um, and uh, you help to support my small business and I so appreciate that. So when you go to rosegrunewall.com, across the top you will see a link that says shop with me and you can shop my online store right there. In the description of this video, don't forget my hand pen class to go. So featuring this pretty die cut image, um, it, tomorrow's the last day to pre-order. So don't wait, you get to make 12 cards with that. You get the Hand Pen Memories and More Pack. I think some Gilded Gems or something like that. I can't remember. The ones that I wanted to use were out of stock. So 
um, and you get everything pre-cut and sent to you and you get some of the pale papaya open weave ribbon which we might have to swap out too because some of that is back ordered but um, you get to make 12 pretty cards and um, I deliver it right to your door so don't miss out on that use that link to pre-order okay I am wrapping up for the night and going to finally eat dinner. Thank you so much for joining. Again, I'm here every Monday at 7 Central uh, where you can catch all sorts of ideas on my Make It Monday lives. So I will be right back here next week, same time, same place. All right, have a great night, everyone. See you later. Bye.